Chapter 7. Letting Go. I sometimes wonder, as I read the Capitolos and Insios, about the events surrounding many of the Strayeran. It is almost as if there is some music to the cosmos and our life is the dance that goes with the tune. As if some celestial choreographer directs our choices and challenges, creating a thing of both beauty and functionality. Cassiopeia, in Scrito. The five weeks until the solstice festival went by too fast. Before this time, Sebastian took his son's presence in his life as one of the few constants upon which he could rely. Soon, however, his life would be a wasteland, living and working for Groban, while his best friend and his son lived too far away to visit casually. A full day of journeying. The only happiness he would be granted would be the occasional brief visits and, once Marina quickened, even those visits might be shortened or eliminated. He prayed often to the seven deities, begging for their mercy, for the chance to be with his son. Each time, he could feel the answer within him. He would not be granted his wish. Instead he would be cut off from his son. This, then, was his true punishment for his younger years, bedding as many women as he could and boasting of his conquests to other men. The day before the festival, Sebastian and Dumeril went on a boar hunt. Normally fraught with risks, the hunt was swift and successful, a powerful omen foretelling the success of the nuptials. When they returned, the women had created a ground oven to roast the boar for almost a full day. The marriage would be at dawn, and the feast before midday. Dumeril and Sebastian remained at Groban's estate the night before the ceremony. They would prepare by candlelight well before sunrise, and when ready, would ride the two cart horses that would be used to pull the carriage bringing the couple to their new home. Sebastian helped Dumeril to dress. The two men went out to the stable, to the horses that were prepared for them. Before they mounted, Dumeril put both hands on Sebastian's shoulders, and said to him, Thank you, for being my friend, for your loyalty, for everything you have done for my family. I shall never forget all that we owe you. Sebastian swallowed down the emotions burgeoning within him. He gave Dumeril a leg up into the saddle before mounting his own horse. The moon was full and the pathway well lit, and they arrived just as the first pink streaks of dawn began to stain the sky. The smell of the feast being prepared wafted lazily in the dawn air as the couple were joined. The seven deities were generous that morning, painting a glorious backdrop to the ceremony as the sun burst over the horizon. About an hour after the midday feast, Sebastian was sitting in the shade with the new couple. Dumeril was focused on his new bride and frequently lost the thread of the conversation. His cousins were teasing the newlyweds, and laughing at the rise of a blush on Marina's cheeks. Papa! Come see the funny fish, Corleon yelled as he ran to where they were all seated in the shade. He was hopping up and down in urgency and several other boys were waiting. Dumeril looked up briefly, clearly unwilling to spend much time away from his new bride. Can you show it to Sebastian? Corleon's response was to grab Sebastian's hand and start tugging. Once Sebastian began to follow him, he skipped ahead with the other boys following his lead. Sebastian reached the wooden pier in time to see Corleon lose his balance and pitch headfirst into the water at the end of the pier. Like all of the children in Palmara, he could swim. But there was a treacherous riptide in the water off the end of the pier when the tide was going out. Sebastian yelled Corleon's name before sprinting to the end of the pier. The riptide was active. Corleon was already some distance away from the pier. He dove into the water, swimming with the current. A gurgling cough oriented him. He saw the flash of Corleon's face before he was pulled back under the surface of the water. The current was dragging him towards the sea almost as fast as Sebastian could swim. Sebastian was exhausted, but he could not give up. He would die if Corleon died. He had to save him. Putting all his power into the effort, he surged towards where he last saw Corleon. When he felt the brush of warm skin against his fingertips he grabbed whatever he could, yanking the small body to the surface with him. Once on the surface of the water, Sebastian ignored everything but the still body in his arms. He wasn't breathing. 
some faint memory stirred in his mind. And he gave him his own breath. Sebastian could have wept when Corleon started to cough. Only then did he notice his surroundings, seeing another danger. The swift current would soon sweep them out to open water. They were almost at one of the two spits of land, like arms embracing the bay. Sebastian's legs were leaden as he tried to swim to the closest shore. When he felt the brush of sharp rocks against his foot, he redoubled his effort, his breath coming in heaving gasps by the time he pulled Corleone up onto the sand with him. Groban and Dumeril arrived riding a couple of the cart horses. On the opposite spit of land, Groban's brothers were on the other cart horses. When Dumeril took Corleone into his arms, Sebastian understood that he was superfluous to his son's life. He looked away and met Groban's eyes, seeing compassion, he knew what it was like to lose a child. I made my father promise, Sebastian, that if you were able to save my son, you would be freed of your obligation to our family. We are both grateful for your quick thinking on this day. Dumeril's voice was thick with the tears he was unable to suppress. Sebastian wanted to reject the offered freedom, to stay with his son. But he felt a prickle of sensation down his spine. One or more of the seven deities was telling him that he must go. He nodded solemnly. I shall ever be loyal to your family. They shook hands. Dumeril said, accept the freedom that is yours. Know that Corleone will be cherished and loved as if he was my very own. No son will matter more to me than he already does. <laughs>